And when I read that, there was a click going in my brain. So you can apply the same rule for literally any task that you have. I am making exercise a priority. First, because I got a lot of things going on. It instantly became a game changer. Hello, fellow creator. Welcome back to the channel, the best place on YouTube for creative productivity and growth. And welcome to another episode of Office Hours, the series where I answer productivity questions from you or random strangers on the internet. And today we have a good episode coming up. We got motivation versus willpower. Then we got to talk about how to fit exercise in your schedule. And finally, we're going to talk about performance anxiety. So make sure you watch the video until the very end to get my best actionable advice that you can implement right away on these three topics. And if you want your question to be featured in a future episode of Office Hours, please leave a comment with your question, with your struggle when it comes to productivity, and I'll do my best to include your question in one of the next episodes of Office Hours. All right, let's get started with this episode and let's discuss motivation versus willpower. So here the question is, how much do you rely on motivation versus forcing yourself? I feel like when I usually get something done, it is in spite of the fact that I'm kicking and screaming while doing so. Then what's the point of living if I'm usually tricking myself into doing things I don't feel like doing? So a hard question here, and let's actually start at the end. When you're doing things and tasks that you like, that you love, you kind of don't need motivation to keep going because now you're just doing things that you like. And that's the thing with distractions. You don't need to force yourself to watch Netflix. There's no need for an argument with your brain saying, I should do this because so and so. The same if you want to waste an hour scrolling through Instagram or playing a game in your phone. Those things are nice to do. They keep you very big hit of dopamine when you do them. So what I'm trying to say is you're only going to force yourself to do the things that you don't like or that you don't want to do right now. And so at this point, you're going to need to either use your motivation or call upon your reserves of willpower. So let's first talk about motivation. So we have this idea that you need to be motivated to do a task that you don't like. You need to be motivated to get started. But actually in this book, The Motivation Myth by Jeff Hayden, he talks about this concept that motivation follows action and not the other way around. And what that means is the minute you get started, you'll be more motivated to continue. And when I read that, there was a click going in my brain because I started seeing that effect everywhere. Take these videos. I don't always want to record new videos, but the minute that I sit down to record, it becomes a lot easier because now I'm just doing a video. The hard part is actually moving into this chair, putting all the gear and get started recording. Once I start recording, I kind of get into a flow zone and everything becomes a lot easier. And in the end, I'm always happy because I finished the video that it's going to be valuable to you guys. Because the reality is you feel the most motivated when you have momentum behind you. Right, so we've unpacked that part of the motivation. So if motivation follows action, all you have to do is get started. So there are many ways that you can think about this. I'm just going to talk about a couple of ones. If you want, I have a video specifically about that and you can watch it here where I talk about the seven tips that I use to stop procrastinating and just get started. And all of them, probably the one that I use the most is the two minute rule. So let's talk about that now. The two minute rule comes from getting things done by David Allen. And the idea is very simple, is that any task that you can complete in under two minutes, don't add it to your to-do list, don't add it to your calendar, just get it done. Another way that I use the two minute rule is just do two minutes on something to just get started. So this is the example that I always give, but to get started on recording these YouTube videos, all I do is set up the material. I put the lights, I put the camera, I put the microphone, I put my computer, adjust the frame, make sure that the shot looks nice, hit record, and now all I have to do is record. And every time I do that, I end up recording because the hardest part was getting started, but now everything is set up for me to actually record the video. If I need to write the script, if I need to write an article, I'll just write the intro or I'll write the part that I'm most excited about. I'll just write nonsense for two minutes. Now, why is that? Because I'm writing, I'm getting into the flow. For two minutes, I accept that what I'm gonna write is gonna be complete garbage. The point is not to write nice sentences. The point is to make sure that I keep on writing. So you can apply the same rule for literally any task that you have. Now, some of the tasks will be very hard to get started and you'll still continue to procrastinate. And yes, on those times, you might need to rely on willpower. So if that's the case, my tip here is to adjust the time that you're gonna work on that task in your biological prime time. So what is the biological prime time? Each one of us has a best time during the day when we feel more in the zone, when it's easier for us to work. For me, like I said in previous videos, this is about 4 p.m. So the task that I have the most resistance to getting started, which is recording these videos, I save them for my biological prime time. And this is true because it's now 5.32. So what does this mean for you? It means that you need to first know your biological prime time. For most people in the world, they'll be early morning, but just find your own and make sure that you reserve that time, that time slot in your calendar calendar to work on a task that you've been procrastinating on. And then when that time comes, remember the special two minute rule. Just do something that moves you in the general direction for two minutes. It's very simple in theory and it's also very simple to apply. Just force yourself for two minutes. That's all the willpower you're going to need. Reduce the friction to start and get the ball moving. It's Newton's laws of motion. An object in motion stays in motion. Motion reactivated. <laughs> 
And that's it on relying on motivation and willpower. Let's move to the second question, which is how to fit exercise in your schedule. So here's a question. Very busy people. How do you fit in exercise? Looking for some tips as it seems I'm having some trouble exercising daily. Okay, so let's start by discussing the part about what is exercise. In his book, The 4-Hour Body, Tim Ferriss talks about the difference between physical recreation and exercise. And what he talks about in exercise is the minimum effective dose, meaning the smallest quantity of exercise possible to produce a targeted outcome. And what that means is that 15 minutes of high intensity workouts with kettlebells, it's much better than a one hour jog on the treadmill. Exercise should always be intentional and with a goal in mind. And so that's the first part. You don't need a lot of time as long as you're doing the right type of exercise to make sure that you're achieving your goals. Focus instead on high intensity workouts and you don't need to spend hours at the gym. Now, me personally, I've worked from home for the last five years. And as a creator, you really don't have a schedule or a boss breathing down your neck. You don't have a clear structure. And so to me, to make sure that I exercise every day to stay in shape, what I do is schedule a time block on my calendar to make sure that I always have time for exercise. And why is that? It's because I know that if I don't schedule this block on my calendar, it's, it's not going to become a priority. The way that I manage my workload is by looking at my calendar, see what I have to do. And by scheduling ahead of time, half an hour at the end of my workday at 6 p.m., I am making exercise a priority. So that would be the second tip to schedule it in your calendar at the same time every day. You can do it in the morning, at lunch, or in the afternoon, whatever you prefer, whatever's best for you. And what I like to use here when I'm trying to develop a new habit is the don't break the chain method. Now, what is this method? All you need to do is grab a calendar. And then every day that you complete the habit that you want, in this case, exercising, you're going to mark that day with a big red cross. And over time, as you do your habit every single day, you're going to start to have a chain of red crosses. And you're going to like seeing that chain. You've got to be proud of your accomplishment. You did it every single day. And now all you have to do, your only job is to try not to break that chain, to keep it going for as long as you can. And that chain will turn into a streak. And at some point, life gets in the way and going to miss one day. And that's fine, but you're going to start from zero the next time. Don't miss two days in a row. That's all you have to do. Bounce back, start the next day, start a new streak. Is its winning streak. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about working under pressure and performance anxiety. So here's a question. How do you control your study work anxiety? And he gives an example. I love writing, but writing under time pressure and bothered by my overthinking is a burden to me. I'm very passionate about what I do and nobody other than myself puts pressure on me. And I completely relate with this feeling of you being your worst enemy. Because in all honesty, the biggest judge of your life is yourself. So when it comes to anxiety, to being on a time clock, to being under pressure, what I like to do is having a backlog available so that I never put myself into that position. So for example, let's say that I want to publish three articles per week on my blog. Now, if every week I just get three articles done, at some point, if there's a minor delay, something that goes in my life, that pressure is going to catch up to me and there's going to be one day, like a Tuesday, that I'm going to be stressed because I need to publish something on the blog. And that is a position that I'm not comfortable being in. So what I like to do is just work on focus mode for a few days, for a few weeks, whatever it takes to make sure that I create enough of a backlog of at least two weeks in advance of what I need. So for example, for videos, I want to publish three videos per week. That means creating a backlog of at all times, at least six videos ready for you guys. And why is that so important to me? First, because I got a lot of things going on. So at one point, I might decide to spend one week doing something else and want to have time to create new videos. And second, because by doing them ahead of time, I feel a lot more relaxed when I'm actually recording. So the way to do that, if I need to publish three videos, I always try to do at least four per week. And then if a week goes by that I don't record at all, that's fine because I know there's a little bit of a backlog. So that gives me a week's notice to adjust my workflow. Unclog the backlog. Unclog the backlog. As for the overthinking part, there are two ways that I like to think about this. The first one is meditation. So I used to be very skeptical about meditation. I was that kind of person that thought meditation had no effect in your mind or in your body. But once I started doing it, and it's not a lot of time every day, it instantly became a game changer. My mind feels a lot more clear. I'm able to relax a lot more. And I also find that I make better connection between ideas. And the way that I do this is by sitting at my chair here or my bed for 15 minutes, listening to guided meditation. I use an app called Headspace, which has guided meditations. This is not a sponsored message at all. I just love their app. And I think they have a free trial to get you up to speed. So just give it a try for 30 days. Try to meditate for 10, 15 minutes. I like to do it in the mornings, but you can also do it at what time suits you best. And you're going to feel that after a few sessions, you're going to feel a lot more relaxed and hopefully not overthinking so much. Then the second thing that I like to do is doing a brain dump. And I have a video exactly on this technique and how I use it to stop being overwhelmed and stop overthinking. All you have to do is click here to go watch that video and see how I use brain dumps to not only call myself, but also promote new discoveries. So click here to go watch that video right now, and I'll see you on the next video and the next episode of Office Hours. Bye-bye.